Now we'll talk about very important view, which is the four chamber view. Uh, as you see, as we said, the right, the heart is tilted from the upper lower and from the right to the left. So the apex will be here and the base will be here. Uh, in the uh, uh, four chamber view, I will put <coughs> the mark of the probe will be on the left side at three o'clock. Okay. And the mark here in the machine will be in the uh, left side. So all these, the mark is fitting the mark. So mark is looking for the left side structure. And here is the left side, will be the left side structure. Okay. And I need to uh, visualize the heart uh, in vertical way from the apex to the base. I need to go in this direction. Okay, it's very important to get it in vertical way to do a very good measurement. So I will put the probe here, okay, and I will put in the third space here, in the fifth intercostal space, anterior axillary line, and I will increase the depth, okay. You see here, you see here, my probe is here, the mark is here in the left, and the mark is the left, so here is the left side structure, left ventricle, left atrium, and this is the right ventricle, right atrium. And as you see, I am cutting the heart in this direction, so it's vertical axis of the heart, so the septum is straight away. This is the best way to visualize the heart in four chamber, bar stern, four chamber view. You should look for the heart straight away, to do your measurement in Doppler in proper way. Uh, what are you going to see in this four chamber view? Okay. First, first I need to assess the uh, relative size of the right ventricle to the left ventricle. It's very important. Right ventricle supposed to be 60 percent of the left ventricle in uh, the size, in the uh, volume. Uh, if it is, is the same in the volume as left ventricle or more, that means there is problem with the right side and there is uh, right side uh, acute or coronary coronal gland. Okay, this is number one. So here the right ventricle is less than the left ventricle. Okay, what else? I need to assess the function of the left ventricle. How can I assess the function by visual assessment? The three point and will increase one point in this view. The three point is the thickness of the wall. This inferior septal wall, because I not see the aorta, so this is the inferior septal and this is the anterior lateral. Thickness of the wall. There is thickness of the wall, I see. And uh, move it of the wall towards each other. So the wall here is moving towards each other. Number three, the mitral valve leaflet, anterior mitral valve leaflet is moving towards the septum in diastole. And it's almost touching the septum. And the fourth point in this view is the upward movement of the annulus of the mitral valve, lateral and medial annulus. So it is moving up with uh, systole, and this is good. Should be almost one centimeter moving up, okay? But what else I can do in this view? I will uh, measure what's called the MAPC. I will put the m mood on the mitral valve annulus here, lateral, lateral mitral valve annulus, and I will measure this upward movement of the lateral annulus of mitral valve by the motion mode, which is M mode. I need to assess how far it go by centimeter in this direction. I will put the diameter. I will measure here from the tip of the, the beak of the systole here, and I will press it to the end of the systole here, not this point, this point, this point, this point, and this point at the end of the S3. It is 1.6 centimeter, more than one centimeter, it's normal, okay? This is a measurement of the upward move to the heart uh, to assess the longitudinal fibers of the left ventricle, okay? What else I can do in this uh, view? I will assess the upward movement of the right ventricle by measuring the tapsy tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion. I will put the M mood at parallel to the tricuspid annulus and will assess this upward movement from the big systole to the end diastole. Here, not here. Here, in the end diastole. 
if more than 1.7 centimeter it's normal it is here 2.5 centimeter so it is normal so with with volunteer with our dear volunteer there is normal size right ventricle less than left ventricle and there is normal mapsy and there is normal taps what else can i do i will measure what's called simpson i need to assess the volume of the left ventricle in diastole and the volume in systole and from these two volume i can assess what's called ejection fraction by simpson method okay i will press freeze i will visualize the maximum volume okay it's the maximum volume i will press measure this is the end of the stolic diameter i will measure the end of the stolic diameter This is 125. This is the end of the solid diameter, and I will end, uh, measure the end the solid diameter. Hmm. This is the end the solid diameter. <coughs> From here, the annulus of the valve, and I will just in the endocardial border. I will not measure the trabeculation, all the trabeculation from the endocardial border, okay? And the ejection fraction in forward chamber view is 69% because the machine will subtract the end, end systole from end diastole will divide by end diastole and will bring this Simpson methods and it is uh, 69. You can do it by two chamber view. I will move the probe from four chamber view to the two chamber view. Diameter here, I will measure maximum end diastolic diameter. In the two chamber view, I will take into care the endocardial border. It is 129, and I will assess the and this is the. This is the end of systole. This is the end of the systole. And this is the end of systole. From this end of systole, I will measure. I will measure endocardial border without this trabeculation. Okay? I will cut all this trabeculation and I will cut also the babillary muscles. Okay? It is uh, uh, 60. The by the the sensor method by 2D, uh, it is 56, and the machine will take the average of the Simpson methods in uh, four chamber view and two chamber view, and will give what's called lift of token ejection fraction by plane by two, and in this volunteer it's 63, and it's going with other methods. Okay, so we did now <coughs> the assessment of systolic function by several ways. The last way will be the tissue doppler. I will see, I will measure the upward movement of the annulus of the mitral valve medial and lateral by what's called the tissue doppler, which will measure the movement of the tissue, the velocity of the tissue. I will, I will put the tissue doppler here after that pulsed wave doppler. I will increase the size of pulsed wave to 5.5. I will put the pulsed wave at the septal mitral valve annulus. 
And as you see, this is the tissue doubler of the septal mitral valve annulus. It composed of the E prime, which is the passive diastolic uh, relaxation of the septum, and this is the A prime, which is atrial kick, and this is the isovolumic contraction, and this upright wave is the S prime, which uh, is uh, denoting the systolic the systolic contraction I will make system and I will make tissue doubler this is the S' this upright wave this upright wave after isovolemic contraction is the S wave responsible for the upward movement it is 10.3 more than uh, 6.5 it's normal so in this in our volunteer also S prime tissue doubler is also normal. And I can measure the S prime of the lateral mitral valve annulus. Balsed wave. I will put parallel to the lateral annulus. And it will give the same. I will measure. I will take S prime. This is a this is a E a wave E prime, and this is A prime, and this is a, a isovolemic contraction, and this is a S prime, which denoting the upward movement of the lateral mitral valve annulus. It is 12.7. It is normal. So, in our volunteer. We assess the left ventricular function by all means, and it was normal. What else can we do from the advanced, advanced critical care ultrasound point of view? We'll uh, talk about the stroke volume uh, determination and the uh, diastolic function assessment.